The Colts are seven and five on the season without the number four overall pick at quarterback. And he's done so beautifully. Colt McCoy for the people out there. When you dig into the playbook, what does this Indianapolis Colts offense look like right now? They're playing good. And let's take a window into their second, third, and fourth dropbacks of this game because they do a really, really nice job of staying on script and hitting a big play. So second dropback of the game, they're going to motion over to a one by three formation. Because they're in their first 15, they're on script. Steichen has a, a, a good feel that they're going to play a certain coverage. And right here, they're playing push coverage. Now, if they played man, this still works. But percentage-wise, he's saying, I think they're going to play quarters to this formation. And, and they do, right? What you're going to get is a corner route by the tight end to lock down the backside corner. You're going to get a little play fake here to tie down the linebackers. And then this safety is a push safety. We call it quarters push coverage, right? If you're spread out, it's just quarters. You motion to a one by three, the safety pushes for help. Great play design here. The Colts are going to run an over route, which is going to occupy that safety. Pittman's going to run a dig. And now you're singling up this guy on a post. And the read is really right here. If he settles his feet at all on this dig route, you throw the post, right? I can hear Jay Gruden in the back of my head saying, as soon as your back foot hits the ground and it's quarters, throw the post, right? Set your feet to throw the post, react to everything else. So on this motion, Gardner sees its quarters and it's a post throw all the way. The play action holds the linebackers for a tick. This safety again, he's the read, right? That's where your eyes go. If he settles at all, it's a post throw. Gardner does a nice job, lays it up, and it's a huge play first drive of the game. But watch the protection here. We all know Quentin Nelson is a legit guard, right? He's one of the best in the, in the game, right? But this protection is wild. They're going to block down with the right tackle. They're going to block back with the center, block here, and leave this pass rusher on the edge like untouched. Tight ends releasing, okay? They're going to ask Quentin Nelson to pull and block a free – edge rusher by himself okay so impressive you can't add, I mean, there's a lot of teams that can't do this right because they don't have quentin nelson here he comes on the protection and he just eats this bull rush by the defensive end buries his feet gardner doesn't even feel him and throws a dime the play pass works great these guys have to respect a pulling guard you see a pulling guard your eyes as a linebacker have to respect your gaps right he has to feel that just for a tick and it opens everything else up. But this play happens because of your all-pro left guard. I mean, this this is incredible. So we go from that first and 10 to the next drive, second first and 10. Uh, really the third drop back of the entire game. And Colt, we always talk about scripts, 10 to 15 plays. Uh, we go from that shot play to a formation, an alignment among wide receiver screens I rarely see across the league. This alignment is unique for sure. Again, your first 15, Shane Steichen does a phenomenal job week to week of, of creating some completions for the quarterback, right? We motioned to a one by three, got a big post for a touchdown, seven points. We're staying on script. Now we come back first play of the next drive and you get in a pretty unique formation. We've always talked about four yeah. by one formations or formations into the boundaries, something that's unique to the defense. This is certainly unique. And, and I think it's a read, right? You get four on four, you know, four defenders for four receivers here, and you get a post safety kind of pushed over to this side, right? If this safety is kind of lined up over here, I imagine you throw your one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's a, it's a right. cool design because it gives your quarterback an answer. But it's And, and it's also simple. We're going to get a six-yard completion on an easy screen, right? He's got to throw around the defensive end. And these are plays that, you know, maybe don't, show up all the time and people don't study for them or defenses aren't prepared for them. Or as you're watching the game, you're like, Oh wow. A little, little screen for six yards. Well, these are um, plays that really help your quarterback get comfortable. They say that it, it helps him, you know, get the ball out of his hand quick. He's not taking a hit. The linemen love this because they all get to cut, right? Your right tackle doesn't do a great job. He, his job is to cut the defensive end. Right, he doesn't get him down, but Gardner's quick enough with his release that he gets a it gets a completion, and these guys just get to chop at knees. Right, it's a playoff for the offensive lineman too. 
because they're normally pass setting, right? So across the board, as the coordinator, as Shane's calling these plays, you know, guys look forward to this because it's we can all turn our brains off. I'm cutting the guy in front of me or I'm blocking the guy in front of me as a receiver and we're going to get six yards. Also, you know, might stop the upfield momentum of the pass rushers and other empty situations on top of that. That's right. And it's and it's in the first drive of the game. Again, this is the third drop back of the game, right? Right. No D lineman is thinking on the third drop back of a game. You know, my ears are pinned back. It's empty. There's no running back in the backfield. I'm rushing. Right. And all of a sudden they get chopped. Right. So then they got to be aware of the rest of the game. Like, am I going to get chopped blocked or like, you know, so it's just you're staying on script. Colt, this picture looks like synchronized uh, kneecappers, if I can be honest with you. I know it. (laughs) Okay, fourth drop back of the game, then just two plays later, uh, whenever you watch the Colts offense with Shane Sykin, you're going to see a bunch of motion. You're going to be see a bunch of shifts. You're going to see a bunch of window dressing and. In this case, Colt, it puts them in a really profitable situation, what should be a completion. Yeah, one of the things that pops up when you watch Shane Steichen's offense is that you see a lot of the same plays. Um, And so a lot of times it's easy to think, oh, this is a simple offense, or they're lining up in two-by-two and they're just running concepts. And I'd like to say that that's not the case. I think he calls these simple plays – these simple concepts, stuff that you see a lot at the right times because he's basing it off percentages of what the defense does. He has a feel for when to call these plays, and that's why they work so well. And also, I feel like he's getting very creative with Josh Downs and Isaiah McKenzie, putting him in the backfield, yo-yo motions, motion him across the ball, send him to the flat. They're catching two or three flat routes a game and creating something out of nothing a lot of times. Like they are, they are explosive players playing these like hybrid roles and they are dynamic, right? The ball in their yeah. hands, anything can happen. So now you get a third and one situation. You're going to go 12 personnel. So you're going to get big people and motion down into the backfield. So now he's a threat. You don't know where he's going. Then motion Pittman out who lines up and in, in like a, wing sort of alignment now you stretch the defense you don't block the defensive end because it's a true rpo right if he crashes like he does here now gardner pulls it and he has he's the run pass option right he can he can run it himself or he can throw it's third and one he crashes gardner pulls right i think you know, if he had this play back, he'd probably like to throw this guy. Yeah. You know, I'd there's say. a lot of space in here, <laughs> right? He kind of, you know, probably surprised a little bit. It's third and one. They they might have been practicing all week thinking like, oh, we're going to have downs in the flat for a first down. And, you know, just, you know, if he had this play back, I think he'd throw that. And then he reacts to Pittman. So you, you, you technically have two guys wide open on third and one, and they don't convert here. But at the same time, like this play right here puts a lot of stress on the defense. So Steichen is creative. He calls plays at the right times. And I mean, again, most of the time Indy's hitting these and that's a big reason why they've won their last four games. And it's pretty obvious that the Titans are confused defensively. And remember, this is just the second, third and fourth drop back of the entire game. There's going to be a lot of play action, a lot of RPO looks throughout the entire game. And I'm sure already this Titans defense, uh, their heads in a blender a little bit. Colt, would you mind if I take like a little stab of just like describing what this Gardner Minshew led offense is like with the Colts? Yeah. I won't do it as perfectly as you, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. As we've talked about offense runs a lot of RPOs with motions with Josh downs and whoever else to stretch them laterally shorter patterns to wide receivers who are willing to take shots. A la Michael Pittman, who is an, Absolute dog and is going to be a very rich man this offseason. Then a quarterback who likes to move off his spot in the pocket, sometimes drawing a linebacker and then throwing to that spot and filling it with the ball. And they suck you in to take, to take their shots and pick their spots down the field while also sprinkling, sprinkling in some like really creative designs on top of it. Again, I don't think that like that's the offense at all that he wanted to run with Anthony Richardson 13 weeks into the season. But it's the offense that he's kind of forced to run with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. And at that point, they've won four in a row. And I believe they are five and one on the road this season. That's pretty incredible stuff. They have 
really good players at important positions and they're maximizing, yeah. you know, all the talent that's on their roster right now. So when I say a quarterback needs to play hot, what would you say that means? We talk about quarterbacks playing hot. There's a lot of different things asked of a quarterback, depending on what system you're in, right? You know, West coast system, traditional systems. It's like, we're, you know, we're running a progression and you go to one to two to three to four to five. And if you're hot, find number one or find number two. Um, there's other systems where quarterbacks are in charge of mic points and we're going to like flipper protections and pick the hots up. So you're not playing hot and the receivers don't have to adjust their routes. Right. There's other systems that say like, if they blitz, replace the blitz with the ball, right. I'll build in, um, hot routes for you or on the backside of concepts, I'll build in a hot if you happen to get heated up. Right. And I think Shane tends to be in that latter part. I'm going to build in some hot uh, routes for you for all the plays. It's your job to find them as the quarterback, but it's, it's a simple process because I, as a quarterback don't have to make the mic point every play. I don't have to adjust the protections. I can just react to what the defense is doing. And so here's two perfect examples of how Shane Steichen gives the quarterback answers, and we call it playing hot. We're in the second quarter here, kind of backed up, right? And this is a prime situation on a second and 10 play where if you break down the uh, the defense for the Titans, you kind of know, okay, the percentages for them to rush me or to blitz me right here are, are pretty high, right? I'm, I'm backed up. I'm on the 10-yard line. It's second and 10. Like, you know, this is a chance for them to put some heat on me and like make it, make it third and long. Great play call here. You motion Pittman over, nobody adjusts. So you know, it's zone coverage. This is going to be what we call scat protection, where it's a free release running back. So he's free releasing into the flat. So now you only have five guys up front in protection. It's a five man protection and they're going to bring an extra, right? The ID originally was this guy and the linemen, these five guys are going to track him. Okay. Wherever he goes, they're going to block him. They're not going to block him. They're not going to block him. And they may, they might push out to the nickel if he comes, but it's whoever comes on this side is who the line they're blocking away from your hot routes. When the Colts decide to bring this linebacker, Gardner's calm. He takes a breath. He's like, okay, you know, my antennas are up at second and 10. Steichen calls a great play, and we just replace the blitz. And now, out of a backed-up situation, you got the ball out past the 20. So as he motions over, you know, before the motion, he's the mic. Okay? So now these five guys are blocking these four plus the mic. Okay? If he comes, we're hot. If he bails and the nickel comes, they can sort out to the nickel because this is the mic. Okay, so all their eyes are facing this way as linemen. But when this guy comes, Gardner knows this is my responsibility. Okay, here he comes. Linemen track their guys, do a nice job. The left tackle stays on the, on the known rusher. And now I've got to beat the blitzing linebacker. And it's, I mean, it's well done. This is teach tape. This is perfect, right? And it results in a first down from a backed up situation. So these simple plays like this don't show up a lot on, you know, when you're watching a game and you're like, oh, cool. No, this is, that's a huge play in the game, right? That's a confidence booster. That's significant for the play caller to understand the quarterback is seeing what he needs to see. He's getting the ball out of his hands. And now I got, now I have an open call sheet because I'm first and 10 at the 22-yard right. line now, and I'm not backed up second and 10 on the 10. Here we are in the third quarter again. We're talking about playing hot, and, and this is a little bit different situation. This is third and eight, right, almost to midfield. And normally across the NFL, when you break down defenses, you, you break them down by category. You break them down by third and two to five, uh, third and – you know, or two to four, third and five to seven, and then third and seven to 10. Like in each of these areas, you sort of make percentages of what the coverage is, right? Lower yardage to go is a lot more man coverage. But the more you get in like the seven, eight, nine range, the the more across the board, the percentage for 
blitzes uh, goes up, right? So you got a third and eight here down by four. So basically Steichen is going to call a concept, right? If it's zone coverage, we're going to work a curl over the ball and a one-on-one -on -one curl outside with a back who's going to check and run a swing route, okay? That's the concept. It's curl flat. Very good concept. If you get heated up, I'm going to call a double slant on the backside end of the boundary, right? That's This or this is your hot answer, okay? That way, Gardner doesn't have to say, I need to re-mic it. Let's, let's move the mic or uh, re-ID protection because I don't know. It, it just allows him to play fast. Okay, if you come after me, I'm throwing the slant. If you play zone coverage or man coverage, I'm working the concept to the front side, right? I, I love the style. Here they come. They're bringing the mic and the nickel. And, you know, in this particular pressure, they're bringing everything from the front side. And the defensive end is dropping to cover the inside slant. And now you got a one on one slant outside versus heat. And, you know, a slant on third and eight converts. He gets about 13. As a play caller, he's saying, hey, Gardner. I'm going to build in these hots. If you get heated up, here's your answer. It's your job to find it, right? If you don't, play the concept. Something will happen or some, something good will happen. I'll give you a chance for a conversion on the front side. So really nice job, you know, two plays in this game where Gardner knows he's getting heated up and he finds his, finds his hot answer. But that's all set up by really good scheme, really good coaching, and, un, you know, understanding um, exactly how to attack defenses you know, when you get in these situations, backed up, third and longs, I think it's pretty impressive. Yeah, and really good offensive line communication on top of that. Colt, you mentioned the open playbook. Uh, I feel like Shane Steichen, in each game I watch of this Colts team, throws in one or two trick plays. Uh, I call it sprinkling in a bit of fun. Uh, you can tell he enjoys that every single Sunday. Uh, and against the Tennessee Titans, he certainly did that to create explosive chunk gain here. Yeah, I call this play the hot potato, right? <laughs> the annexation of Puerto Rico. Little trick plays like this. You're going to run a big post. And if he's there, throw it, Gardner. Just like the post you yep. threw early in the game. Like, put your back foot in the ground and let it fly. But this post is really designed to carry this safety and this corner out of there. It's three deep. This is the thirds player, right? So if you can pull the thirds player out and somehow get these, line, these linebackers distracted, we're going to kind of sell block by the tight end and then – he's going to replace the third's corner who gets carried out by a post. And all this stuff in the backfield is just distraction. And here's why I call it, right? Confuses the flat player in cover three, right? His eyes are all in the backfield the whole time. He does a nice job kind of just getting lost. The corner gets run out of there by this post. The safety kind of recognizes something's not right and he bails. So now this grass all out here is the open space on the field and the tight end does a nice job of just finding it. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. And in a division game on the road, that's a huge play. Huge. And again, this creates an explosive chunk gain. Colt, I feel like with Anthony Richardson, the plan was to create a bit more of these inside the structure of a play. Uh, just... Big man, super athletic, can throw deep. It feels like they have to pick and choose their shots when doing that with Gardner Minshew, but it certainly happened at the right time in overtime to really change the course and the direction of this game into a win column for the Colts. Absolutely. And I think one thing that's really cool about the the Colts and Shane Steichen, you know, Cam Turner was my quarterback's coach in Arizona the last couple of years, love him. He's super smart, super bright. And, you know, one of the reasons why Gardner's playing so well is because he's got Cam. I mean, Cam is a, a great quarterback's coach. I've been in his room for a couple of years. And so now we're in the fifth quarter, right? We don't ever talk about the fifth quarter, but it's the, the, <laughs> the Titans have gone down, kicked a field goal. So now based yeah. on the rules in the NFL, the Colts are allowed a chance with the football, right? If the Titans have gone down and scored, you know, game over. When you watch the, the entirety of this game, the Titans, much like the Patriots at times, play with what we call a trail pipe technique. So anytime 
a slot receiver or an outside receiver is running across the field or whenever they inside stem release, the corners or the nickels who are playing those receivers get into basically a trail pipe technique, like a trail technique, right? So I love, love, love what the Colts do here because they're going to say, okay, if you're going to give me that technique, if you're going to play that way, we're going to inside release on a go ball and then get back outside. And you know what it turns into, Josh? It turns into a slot fade. That's what it turns into, yeah. which we love on this show, right? They get the right look. The safety rotates down. You know, this is some version of like quarters or three week. Like he's just disguising. He's saying if the corner really is hoping for an inside release, like he's going to, he's taking away the outside release based on the location of this safety, right? But good coaching, good scheme says, no, let's purposely inside release and then let's go attack all this grass that's out here, right? Gardner does a nice job holding his eyes, taking a nice job, eyes down the middle the whole time, confuses this guy in the most crucial situation of the whole game because you can make in-game adjustments and because you kind of understand defenses, that's the area of of the field we got to attack. Gardner throws a dime. You know, Alec Pierce makes his second big play of the day, and now you got the ball down inside the five for a chance to win the game. Touchdown wins it. They got the look they wanted. They attacked it. And, man, big-time play in a big-time situation. Yeah, and huge for Alec Pierce uh, in the second year. It's taken him actually about a year and a half to get one of these big moments. But we talk about, you know, Michael Pittman kind of being the alpha of this group. Josh Downs is definitely a slot plus or how we can stretch things laterally and vertically and we have to catch on top of it. But having someone with like a true downfield presence like Alec Pierce could really help this team down the stretch to make the playoffs. But Colt, what you and I both love too, was the game winning play here by Gardner Minshew, Michael Pittman and company. Right. Huge play to get him down inside the five, go ball to Alec Pierce. Now you get a second and four. This is one of my favorite plays of the game by far. You go in 12 personnel. So you get big people, you motion Pittman over. And now, this is clear as day, no man coverage. This is RPO. If it's not man coverage, we're handing off the ball inside zone. Right here, we're blocking, 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 and we're you know going to try to find the end zone or, or get closer to the end zone in this run. We'll call a third down play, right? But you motion this guy across the ball, your best receiver, Pittman, right? Now you know it's man, and this is a – incredible design i love this play i've thrown some touchdowns on this play right you're gonna basically run a one-step slant and you're gonna act like you're running a flat route or a drag route and break it off to the post and this is what we call in and out coverage so this db and this db are communicating okay whoever comes in this db is going to take them whoever goes out that db is going to take them Right. This is a great design for a couple of reasons. One is Shane knows he's going to get man coverage down tight when you get inside the five. Number two, right. These two teams have so much film study on each other. They're in the division, right. Their games cross over every single week. Like they have a very good idea that when they play man coverage inside the five, they're playing in and out coverage, right. This play doesn't work. If in fact, this play looks dumb. If it's not in and out coverage, <laughs> right? It's gloved, it's glued. But like now that the reason it works, because when he outside release or when he goes to the flat, this guy squares up for the slant route. And if you're as a quarterback, throw this slant route, you're going to hit him in the chest and he's going the opposite way. Right? right. When known in and out coverage allows you to sell the flat. And now this guy's beat, right? He's outside leverage. He can't, Take that throw away. Can't. Safety's pushed all the way over here. I mean, it's a one-man show to him, right? So here we go. Little token fake. And now this thing works to perfection, and it's a walk-off touchdown on an awesome play design. And the Colts win their fourth straight. Love that. Absolutely love that. I mean, in the year of 
2023 that across the league, so many teams are losing their starting quarterbacks, uh, having to revert to their backups. Uh, it feels like no one is handling it quite as well as Shane Sykin in the Indianapolis Colts. And that is even a bigger feather in the cap for really a first time, first year head coach in order to shift things around. Hopefully you've learned in the ways that he's doing that to fit his personnel, to fit the awareness of his players. And to me, Colt, that is like the ultimate level of coaching. Um, and I just love to see that this Colts team is already succeeding. All right. For all of you, you know what we do every single week, at least one episode of scheme here on the channel this past week, we've done one on Jordan love still promising Calvin Ridley still good. And now about the Indianapolis Colts fun playoff race down the stretch. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and we will see you all next time.